Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another kitchen class edition. Uh, this one I'm super excited about because not only is it showing on Dance with Mary NYC, I have taken over the Cultural Arts Center of Charleston. Uh, so if you don't know about them, they're this great group in Charleston. They do um, a lot of uh, cabaret, but they also do a lot of outreach. They work with uh, children and they also work with adults and they do cultural outreach. So um, I've taken over their Facebook and we're doing a live class for them today. So I just want to say thanks to the Cultural Arts Center of Charleston. And I also want to thank you to Kirk and Scott. I've worked with them for many, many years. They're really fabulous. If you are in the Charleston area, and when when everything is uh, you know gets back to some semblance of normalcy we you go ahead and check them out right uh so uh they're really terrific if you like theater if you like dance if your kids like theater and dance if you want to um, go see a great show they're the ones to see so i just want to say kirk kirk and scott thank you so much for letting me take over your facebook today for this class um, the other thing I wanted to say was thank you to my husband and my stepson because they are not in the uh, kitchen right now. And you know that's important uh, <laughs> for, for people when they want snacks and things. So they're not in the kitchen, so I just want to say thank you. Um, and I also want to say thank you to Cayman Sanchez. He's the one that does my Instagram, um, and he also does all my YouTube editing and everything like that. Um, he's really great with the social media. So if you're a dancer or a dance teacher and you need somebody, his Instagram is Dancing with Q. So Dancing with Q is his Instagram if you want to get in touch with him. I just want to say and give a shout out to Stephen Mitchell and using his music today. Thank you so much. He's really fabulous. Um, this music is available on Ballet Tracks, B-A-L-L-E-T-R-A-X. Ballet Tracks is uh, an Apple iTunes app. So just go to the Apple iTunes store, um, app store, and you can download his Ballet Tracks. And it's free. And then there's some in, in app purchases, but it's really worth it. He's just so fabulous. And thank you so much. Um, I want to also tell you a little bit about Onstage. Onstage Dancewear NYC has been a great friend to this channel. They're a terrific store in New York City. They're the only independent store now in New York City that's selling dance clothing. Uh, and they've been in the business for 40 years. And Ronnie, who owns the store, is a terrific friend. They've got all kinds of gear there. And they are having an online sale. So if you go on Instagram, they're on stage dancewear NYC and they are also having a sale of 25% off so the sale code is hashtag 25 off so hashtag 25 OFF for your 25% off and you know he treats his employees well and he's good to the dance community so why don't you give your money to somebody like that rather than one of these big box stores that are a little bit soulless and they're also not treating their employees so well during this, this crisis so that's you know rather than click on that site, why don't you go to the on stage and order. And then just one last thing um, for my new friends that I'm making in Charleston. It's nice to meet you. And I also, if you're interested, I have a YouTube channel, Dance With Mary NYC, and it was for every and all things point shoes, but now it's turned into a free class Thing. So the, the free classes are just the way I can pay it forward, right? So I, I've been trying to help out the dance community. There's all kinds of fun classes on there. There's Pilates and like intermediate class and then foot exercises, intermediate class. And there's even floor and center work if you're more of an intermediate and, or um, advanced beginner dancer. Okay, so this class is going to be designed for beginners, adults, and young students. Uh, if you are wanting to work on your fundamentals, and let's face it, ballet is all fundamentals. Everybody goes, oh, I already learned that. Can I, can I go on and do the next thing? I'm like, no, you have to be in there every day working over and over and over again, perfecting your fundamentals. So from all the way from a little student uh, studying all the way up to somebody like, say, Misty Copeland, who's quite famous, they're in class doing the same plies and the same tendus every day. So it's really getting down the basics. So we're going to break down some of the basics and get you a nice class that way. I would just say for anybody who's just getting started or if you've had a break and you haven't been moving so much, modify everything. Don't try to do too much. Be careful. And then keep coming back to this class. We'll put it up on the YouTube Dance with Mary NYC. And if you keep coming to this class and you do it very mindfully and very methodically every day, 
then you're going to keep getting better and better. Okay, so I am actually going to start on the floor. So just make sure, especially for my young students, you have permission to use the space because I know, you know, we're all in different spaces and just be careful if the floor is slick. If the floor is slick later on, just remember you can always use a wet paper towel on the bottom of your shoes and that'll help you, right? But for right now, we're going to start on the floor and I'm just going to face sideways so you can see me. If you think of your pelvis, right? I got a lot of um, visual aids, so I know Kirk and Scott love my visual aids, right? So if you think of your pelvis as a bowl, and I'm just gonna hold this up kind of close so you can see. So I got a bowl, right? And if you think of your pelvis, I'll stand up. Maybe it's easier if I stand up. If you're sitting, it's actually easier to feel, but it's easier to see if I'm standing. But if you have your pelvis as a bowl and whatever contents you wanna say, like it might be soup or something like that, Right? So some kind of, let's say there's some kind of liquid. For the most part, um, if you're a little bit weaker in your abdominals, your pelvis, your bowl is gonna go like that, right? If you're a little bit tighter in, in um, depending on you know, your, your posture, if you're a little bit tighter this way, you may tip the pelvis that way. What we're trying to do in ballet is get it to a neutral pelvis, just like Pilates, um, or just um, a, a stable pelvis. So if you're going like this, it means abdominals aren't quite kicking in, seat muscles aren't kicking in. We'll help you out with that today. But I want you to just think that we're trying to go for a level pelvis. Now there's other kinds of dancing where the pelvis moves around, right? It's okay, jazz, contemporary, African dance, the pelvis swings very wide, but for ballet, we're trying to find what that middle ground is, that stability in the pelvis. So I want you to get on the floor now because it's easier to feel on the floor. I'm gonna bend my knees and place the soles, uh, the heels of the feet on the floor and then I take my hands and grab a hold of my knee creases just because that helps me sit up. Now, um, there's a great correction that I thought was fabulous that Robin Powell made. She said, imagine two push pins. So you know the pins that you use to put up like say a, a poster, two push pins where your sits bones are. Now, where are my sits bones? They're at the base of your pelvis. Right, there are the bony things that you feel when you're sitting, right? And I want you to kind of just rock back and forth and think of those two bones at the base of the pelvis, those sits bones, as push pins. You're gonna push the push pins into the ground to come up a little higher, lifting your belly button in and up, and that should help stabilize your pelvis, right? And then we're just gonna go through a few pelvic articulations so you can feel it. So I'm gonna grab a hold of the back of the knee creases. I'm gonna begin to pull my belly button in, and then I'm just gonna tuck back. I'm not gonna collapse, right? I'm just gonna tuck back and try to lift my belly button in and up, and my pelvis, yes, is, is under that way, right? Right, you would call that a, a posterior tilt, right? And then you're gonna sit up very tall, and then you're gonna just kind of try to arch the back, and my pelvis is going the other way now, right? So um, I'm gonna sit up tall once again. Think of the push pins. So you're gonna tuck the pelvis under and start to go down, just so you can feel what that feels like, and then sit up, push down on the pit, push pins, send the top of your head up to the ceiling, and then arch the back. One more set like that. You can go inhale if you like, right? And tuck the pelvis under, but lift your belly button in and up, and then sit up tall, and then arch the back. And now try to find what's in between those two, and it's even sometimes good to kind of go side to side on those sits bones. Push the push pins down and have the pelvis come up level, right? So try not to arch the back this way. You're having the pelvis come up level. And one of the ways that I know whether my pelvis is level is if this purple thread, if you can see it, I've got a long purple thread with a weight on it, is in line this way. So I want my pelvis up vertical and I want the spine to go up, not collapse down and not arch this way. We'll talk more about that when we're standing, but if you can kind of try to find between those two, and it helps if you have a mirror a lot, right? One of the ways that you do that, stabilizing the pelvis, is by pulling your belly button below your belly button. You kind of think of it coming in and then going up, right? So just send the top of the head to the ceiling, right? Not arching the back, push the push pins down, lift your belly button. You also kind of have to pinch your low seat muscles together. One of the things that we joke is we say pinch the penny between your low seat cheeks. So think of pinching a penny and going up and then you're gonna be in a more vertical place and that's what we need for ballet. Now I know people are probably like gonna curse me on this, but I've got a minute set on the clock. I am gonna do a plank. Planks are one of the best ways to get strong, best way to feel your core, and also um, fire up everything so that you're warmed up and ready to go, especially if you're coming from a sedentary position. Now for a classic plank, you, you're just gonna make one hand into a fist, 
wrap the other hand around it, you shoot the other legs out long, we don't want to go this way, and we also don't want to go this way, and we also don't want to drop the head. You can go to two knees if you need to, I'll show you this way, right? But you can see I'm still, I'm lifting my belly button in and up. So I'm going to hit the timer for one minute, right? And you're going to hold a plank. Now, I want you to try your best. If you can't do it right now, you try every day, and I'm telling you, you will get better and better, okay? So we go one minute on the clock for a plank on your knees, right, or else a full plank. Okay, here we go. Five minute is going. Okay, so big deal is we don't drop in the seat, right, and we also don't drop in the head. We pick the head up, and we don't lift the seat this way. Keep pulling your belly button in and up. If you soften your knees a little bit, that puts it more into the low abdominals, and that's what you want. And if you feel yourself shaking, don't worry. We call that the tremble of truth. Pinch your low seat muscles. Keep breathing. Right now, if you're an advanced dancer, you can do dips if you like, or you can do shoulder kisses. That's called serratus push-ups. It just depends. You're doing very well if you're still in it. You don't have that much to go, right? Keep breathing, keep resisting the floor, keep lifting your belly button and pinch the penny, okay? You got just less than 10 seconds. You can do this. Really try your best. Keep going. Three, two, one, and there we go. Okay, woo. I don't know about you, but that always warms me up really, really well. Okay, so going on, then I'm going to grab my prompts. I have an exercise that I call the long spine, right? So this was my purple thread, if you couldn't see it earlier. I call this the purple thread, right? And this is just a weight at the bottom of it. So that's called a plumb line, right? And here I am, I'm trying to stand my pelvis up vertically, right? So if you've gone back to here or if you've gone under here, you want to try to get that bowl level and you want to think of the spine going long. So the tailbone doesn't tuck under, tailbone, right? And it doesn't arch this way. It just goes straight down to the floor and the top of the head goes to the sky. Okay, so you want to own the sky with the top of your head, right? Pinch the penny and then just go up. Now we're going to do a little experiment. We're going to try first to find our rotators. That's our ballet rotators. Right? So you're lifting the belly button and you're pinching the penny between the seat. And I want you to take your right leg, you're going to flex it, push through your heel, and then just kind of rotate the leg side to side. I'll show you side to side. Right? My foot is flexed. I'm not doing just my foot. I'm lifting my seat and I'm rotating my entire leg sideways. That's ballet rotation, external rotation. Right? I'm going to put that foot down. Now I'm going to lift the other side. I'm not just doing my foot. I'm lifting my seat, I'm going up to the ceiling, up my purple thread, and I'm just rotating the leg this way. So I can feel the rotators are in the back of the leg. You have to really lift your seat muscles, okay? And then I'm gonna go to first position, right? First position, wherever it stands for you. Some people it's gonna look like this, some people are lucky and it looks like, you know, a little more like that. Some people are somewhere in between. The whole idea is you don't wanna twist your feet. So you go to wherever your natural rotation is, Lifting your tummy, lifting your seat, and then just see if you can stabilize the pelvis. If your pelvis starts to go like this, means you need to maybe do a little less with your feet just so that you can feel your alignment, right? Very first exercise is called the long spine. Now I want you to visualize your spine as a slinky. I'm gonna get close because it's a little hard to see, right? Uh, slinky, right? Okay. So if your spine is a slinky, I want you to think of the top of the head going up, up, up to the ceiling, while the slinky reaches for the floor. So if these pieces between the slinky represent your vertebra, if you've been like this, like we all have because we're stuck inside, right? If you've been like this, this would be your spine like this. That's not healthy. You want your spine to have lots of beautiful space between the vertebra. So visualize that slinky and go up and try to make a little more space. Think of the neck long, okay? So that's the slinky part of it. Right, this exercise, once again, called the long spine exercise. You are in your ballet first position with heels touching. The arms are gonna go on the bar. You're gonna step back for two, for three, four, walk forward, right foot, left foot, lift your abdominals and seat, rotate to first. Go to the half, that's just a demi point. Now you're gonna go to full point. 
and then demi point and lower down. Other side goes demi point and full point and demi point lower down. Other side goes left leg reaches long. Think of the slinky. Four, step in. Left leg, right leg, go up and rotate to first. Now go half point. Really lift the heel high. Toes long. And then demi point come down. Other side goes demi point, full point, demi point come down. We're going to do that four times. Right, left, right, left. Okay, I'll start the music. I will face you for this one. You'll have to reverse, yeah? Okay. Sorry, one moment, having a technical issue with my sound. Battery 100%. Okay, that should be it. Long spine. And step back, right leg, think the slinky. Step right, left, go up the thread. To the half goes half. Full, half. Other side goes demi point, full point. Left leg now go, reach, long spine. Step left, right, up. Now go to the left, full. Good, keep going up the slick. And now go right, reach. Step right, left, go up the thread, and take it over the hip, and take it over the hip, slide legs, and now go left leg, long spine, step to the left, right, go up, rotate your legs, and half, full, half, demi point now, demi, full. And then just bring your arms down, and then just look up and out. And see if you can feel those seat muscles always lifting, abdominals always lifting and going up. Okay, next thing we're going to do, demi plies. Okay, so I am going to use my slinky once again. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see the slinky here, right? It'd be easier to see. Ah, oh, it's easier if I do that. Okay, let me get this. It's all about the wardrobe, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so, uh, there we go. Okay, easier, yep, okay. So if I think of my spine, once again, it's a slinky. I'm gonna just take it up, right? We want that vertical pelvis, the bowl, like we talked about. Four plie, plie literally means, demi-plie means half bend. So we're going to do some half bends. It's a kind of a sophisticated movement though. What happens is the legs are externally rotated. That means you're in your ballet turnout. You're lifting your seat, you're going up that, up that slinky. And now you're going to begin to cut the thigh bone sideways. We're going opening, trying to get the center of the knee over the middle toe. So cut the thigh bone sideways, but guess what? You still have to go up your slinky. So in other words, you don't collapse as you go, right? You go up the slinky as the thigh bones are cutting sideways, right? Now don't worry about if you have a little bit of a curve back here. Some people do. Some people have a bigger curve, a smaller curve. It's okay. What you want to be is very lifted in the front. Okay, so I'm going to go demi plie. I'm going to go bend and bend, coming up and up. I'm going to do two of those. Once again, I'll turn this way so you can see. I'm going to go demi plie. We go demi plie, bend and bend, thinking of the slinky and up and up. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rise up to half toe. I'm going to rise and rise, come down and down. I'm going to brush and lower my foot to second position and adjust my arms accordingly. Demi plie in second, two times, bend and bend, and then come up and up. Demi plie softly bend, not losing any height, still going up in the body. We're going to rise up to this half toe position, coming down, and bring the leg back to first. We will do the whole thing on the other side, to the second, back to first, right? So it's two demi plies, one rise, tendu. Two demi plies, one rise, tendu. Now we're gonna to go to a third position. Third is you're gonna cross your leg partway across. 
Now again, a lot of times people will try to pull their feet back and the hips will go back out this way. I say cross to whatever your natural is and then eventually you'll get stronger and looser through the hips. You'll be able to achieve this easier, right? So my right foot is halfway across. That's gonna be your third. If you have nice loose hips, go ahead to a fifth position right away. You're gonna go two demi plies in the third, then rise up, feet can come apart, you come down, you go tondu to the first. We're gonna do the whole thing on the other side. Two demi plies, one rise, tondu to the second, two demi plies, one rise, tondu back to the front to the third. Left leg is in front now. Fifth position for those that can achieve that, right? Demi plie, not letting the hips go backwards, just going straight to the floor with that tailbone. Rise up and then taunt you back to the first. Once you get back to the first, so we went first, second, third, back to first, first, second, third, back to first. Once you get there, we're going to begin to release the right arm. You're going to bring it up to the high position. You're going to turn the head and you're going to bend over sideways. So try to look away. Try not to let the shoulders ride up with you. You're going to come down, place that hand on the bar. Reach with the left hand, take it up to the high position, shoulder far from ear, elbow open, not closed, neck long, go up and go over to the side. Come back up. One more plie to your stretch, one more rise, and then we're going to lower down and down and down. Okay, first, second, third. I will chat you through the whole thing. Yeah? Okay. Gently take the bar, elbows in front of ribs. Demi plie goes bending. Cut the thigh bones, slowly up. Demi plie bending. Not collapsing. Now we're going to rise up to a half toe position, half toe position. And come down. Tanya goes out to second position. And notice how I adjusted my hands. Elbows in front of ribs. Always thinking of a slinky going up. And rise up goes rising. Coming down. And now you're going to change right leg goes out to third position. Or fifth. And now don't go backwards. Just bend. Tailbone straight to the floor. Top of the head to the sky. And rise up goes, rising, coming down, and touch you back to the first position. Whole thing on your left side. Demi plie. And lengthen to come up. Keep the hands right in front of the shoulder points. And now rise up, rise. Brush that leg to the second position. Notice I adjusted my hands to be in front of the shoulders. Demi plie, elbows far from ribs. Demi plie, and you. Cut the thigh bone sideways. Now lift the belly button, lift your seat to rise. Come down, and now my left leg will go to third position. Adjust your hands as needed. And demi plie. Chest up, eyes up. And demi plie. And now rise up. Rise. Coming down. And tonge you out to the first position. Now release the right. Take it up to the high position. Look away. Bend deep. Up. And touching your ball. Left arm goes shoulder far from ear. Now go up. Try not to shift in the hips. Yeah, hips stay stable. And then one more demi plie. Cut the thigh bones. Now rise up. Lift your belly button, lift your seat, lift your heart very high. Top of the head to the sky, and now roll through your feet, and 
and I'll just look up and out of the end. Shine your heart out. Okay. Next thing that we're going to work on is we're going to work on some fundamentals for Bama Tanju. I cannot even emphasize enough how important it is to uh, have your plies, right? But also to have your tendus. So all ballet, all good ballet is built on plies and tendus. So the better those are, the better your um, overall dancing is. So um, all the time I'll get people and they'll go, okay, well, I know how to do a tendu when I see them doing this. And I'm like, that's not a tendu, right? Um, so what happens is I've got business, uh, welcome to my creepy foot. This is what I call it. This is my creepy foot. And my creepy foot is uh, is uh, for my point shoe fitting, but I also use it for my dance classes. So this is a foot, it's a little too flexible. It doesn't have the tendons and muscles and such, but it, what's great about it is it will show you exactly what you're supposed to do in a tendu. So if we've got the surface here, actually, how do I do this? Right, okay. Kitchen can be a good thing, right? <laughs> okay, so I've got my surface here. Well, let me go this way. Okay, I've got my surface here. So some, you know, when you walk, you go heel toe, right? Right, and then a lot of times some people don't know, understand tendus, I'll see them sort of do this thing. You've got to think that your foot is this elegant thing that's designed to do the, these kind of lovely movements, and we're gonna get really sophisticated with what that is for ballet. I should probably turn it this way, right? Okay, so what starts to happen in a tendu, without lifting my hip or lifting my knee, I'm gonna keep my knee long, and my hip stable, right, in that neutral place, I'm going to begin to slide my foot until the ankle starts to stretch, and then the toes and metatarsals extend, right? And look like a little more like extended, right? So they extend. And then on the way back, I do this. So one more time, that's a brush downward, sliding the foot, sliding the metatarsals until the heel and the ankle start to release, then the toes extend and you reverse that on the way back. So let me put down my teaching a cookie sheet, right? But so here it is. It goes brush, 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 extend the metatarsals, extend the ankle, and then brush on the way back. So what it looks like is something more like this sliding rather than this, right? Or this or this, right? So it's an idea that you're sliding. Everybody just try that, sliding the foot out, bringing it in, sliding it out, bringing it in. Notice I didn't bend my knee or lift my hip. I just took my creepy foot and I just slid it along until the ankle stretches, until the metatarsals extend. Okay, so we are going to do that in different positions. We're going to go to the front, to the side, to the back, and to the side. In ballet, that's called devant, a la seconde, derrière, a la seconde. And when you do that pattern like that, to the front side, back side, it's called en croix because it makes the shape of a cross. So for the front, I want you to think of, you're gonna take your right foot. I'm taking my right foot right now, okay? You think of the inside of the heel, lead. It's gonna lead and slide and make that lovely movement without shifting my hips this way. And then it's gonna to start to bring the toes back. Now I'm gonna slide it out to the side. That's a la seconde and then bring the toes back. Now I'm gonna to go to derriere. Derriere is a little bit different, right? So when you go to the derriere, this is still my right leg, right? I'm gonna to start to work my toes back. You see that? And then I'm gonna bring the heel forward. So now, and then I'm gonna go all as a comb, and that finishes my en croix pattern. So here we go to the other side. Lead with the heel, heel, heel leads. Mm -hmm. And then the toe comes back, 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 back. And then all as a comb, Sliding the foot, never lifting it. You should feel some friction on the bottom of your foot going to the derriere. We go back and back and back, but bring the heel forward, forward, forward. To the all we go side and side and side and bring it in. Okay, so practicing that brushing under. If you do it really well, you should almost hear a swish sound and you should feel um, some friction on your foot. Okay, we're gonna go right, left, right, left with that, yeah? Brush forward, you go brush forward, lead with the heel, out. Now bring the toes back. Also call pose. Up, in. Now when you go to the back, toes go back. Also 
Pulse and hold to the side. There's your en croix. Now I'm going to go en croix to the left. Then lead with the heels. Big toe on the floor. Now toes go back. Pulse and hold. Right hand in. Now we're going to go to the back. And toes go back. And in. Also on both sides. Whole thing once again. On claw and reach. All the while the pelvis stays up and lifted and side. Brush under, never lifting. Toes go back. Toes go back. Elbows in front of ribs, yeah? And side. Left side you go, and brush, toes out, toes back, balls of home, brush under, now we go to the back, toes back, think of the slinky, go up, to the side, go side. And then we're just going to lower the arms, put them on the arm, and just look up and out. Okay, going on. Okay, now we have to learn to do those tendus in a cross position. So it's the same thing, it's the same creepy foot, it's still going to pass through that brush, lift, disengage, and, and come off the floor. Right, so we are going to do something called um, uh, uh, disengage, right? So we are going to go to the front. We're going to brush to the front in the cross position. Now, once again, if you can't cross all the way, don't worry about it. How do I know if I've crossed too far? Well, if your seat goes out, it means you crossed too far. Cross the legs a little less, get your seat and hips under you a little more. So it's the hips are actually always under the ribs, not behind the ribs, right? So we're going to brush to the front. Think of the creepy foot doing the brush. We're going to lift off the floor. You go touch to PK. That just means keep the knees stretched and close toes. Go back. Now we're going to go to the side with that. Side, we'll turn this way. It goes off, and then you go touch, and then close back. You're going to go brush back off the floor and touch to pique. Close this way. We're going to do a movement with our arms where we go touch our fingertips to our shoulders. Reach forward like you're gazing out, like you've tossed something to the wind, and then come down and down. Now I'm going to do that whole thing on the left side. Brush Front, lift the leg, touch to pique. When you lift it off the floor, it's called dégagé. It just means to disengage and then re-engage with the pique. That just means straight knee. You go brush, dégagé, touch to pique, close it back. You're going to touch, elbows up, not down, chest up, gaze out over the fingertips, and then bring the arms down. All right, right legs in front. in front to ribs at the bar, yeah? And front, danger, peaking, toes back, side, try to keep that pelvis level, to the back, look set, back, reach, peaking, close, touching, reach, left side, pose out, up, side goes out, up, Goes out, up, touching to the shoulders, reach, once again you go, and out, up, reach, close front, slice back, and touching here to the elbows, reach, and left side, close front. Dej, touch to peak and close stretch knees and side. Dej, lift to close and we go out, reaching and just bring the arms down at the end. Okay. Next, we're going to do a Batman Glisse. Uh, ballet is based on seven movements, and you've already done some of them. You bent and you stretched. Um, and now we're going to, we're going to, and you actually did a rise already, uh, and we're going to learn to glide. 
right? So once again, creepy foot, right? It's that same thing. The creepy foot is gonna go brush, then it's gonna disengage off the floor, then touch to PK. So the idea is, is that you don't lift to do this movement. The pelvis stays stable and the hips don't go this way, but you brush under, right? So I went through the tondu, this is super important. I passed through the tondu, went off the floor to the PK, right? So I didn't just lift the foot this way, then the pelvis going this way. My pelvis bowl is very stable. So I'm gonna go tondu, degage, and touch to PK, close to first. Other side goes tondu, degage, and touch to PK, close to first. Glisse out. Right? So it's a little bit off the floor. It's only 45 degrees off the floor. Where's 45? It's somewhere between your ankle and your knee. Okay, so 45 degrees off the floor, like an arrow hitting a target. It goes boom, right out. Boom, close first. And then it goes the other side, boom, close first. Then the other side goes boom, and close first. And the other side goes boom, and close first. It's that same thing again. So elbows in front of ribs, hands and wrists relaxed at the bar. Tendu and dégagé and touch to pique. The left goes tendu out and dégagé and touch to pique. Glissé, brush glide off the floor there. Brush glide off the floor there. Brush glide off the floor there, just 45. Then repeat that again, okay? So it's learning to disengage the leg from the floor with a stretch, you know? Stay with the pelvis too, you know? And goes tendu, dégagé. Other side goes. Brush 45. 45. 45. Again, same thing, same song. Glisse, brush on. Brush on. Brush on. Repeat at time. Stable pelvis, yeah? 45, stretch, brush the floor, brush, brush, last time it's taunt, taunt, please say brush, 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 and then just relax, bring the arms down, and always look up and out at the end, yeah, that is good. We're going to do the glisse, but we're going to do it in a cross position. And I'm also going to teach you, um, a lot of people already know glissade, but glissade is the jumping glide. Okay, so it's a glide that jumps. So glisse glides, right? And then glissade is the jump of that, right? Okay, so I'm going to uh, turn this way just so everybody can see. Glisse off the floor, 45 degrees first. So my right leg is in front, fifth or third, whatever you're working to. Right? You go brush close to first, brush close it back, brush close to first, brush close it front. That's just the first part, okay? Brush close to first, brush close it back, brush close to first, fifth to third, you close. Okay, now, glissade. Break this down. There's five elements to glissade. You're going to plie, right? So you plie, open up the thigh bones, cut everything sideways. I'm going to brush my leg to the side. I'm going to jump, transfer my weight. Then I'm gonna brush again to come back in, brush the foot, go to a plie, and then lengthen to come up. Okay, so that was five elements. This way it looks like bend, brush, jump, transfer, second brush in, that's important, to a plie and stretch. So that was your five elements. Now I'm gonna do the whole combination on the left side from the beginning. Brush, close, first. Brush, close, back. Brush, close, first. Brush, close, glissade goes bend, stretch, jump, transfer, brush, plie, and stretch. Okay, so brush, close, first. Uh, brush, close, back. Brush, close, first. Stabilize your pelvis here. Now bend, but don't collapse. Brush, jump, transfer. Brush, the next, second brush, plie, and stretch the legs up. Okay, so plie, brush, jump, brush, plie, stretch. Okay, right legs in front. Yeah. Right.
right leg goes brush first, brush back, brush first, plie, bend, brush, jump, transfer, brush, left, brush, out, first, now plie, brush, jump, transfer, second, brush to plie, again. Stabilize your pelvis dancers. Goes to plie. Brush. Jump transfer. Second plie. Yeah. Set the brush. Plie. Brush. Transfer. Second brush to plie. Yeah. Okay. That was a lot, right? Okay. Going on from here. Next exercise. We're going to do. Atelier. So atelier, uh, it means um, bound step. Um, so it, it's talking about how it, it stays on the floor, but it's the big deal is it's a transfer of weight. Okay, so uh, let me get my, oh, where'd it go? I lost my prop, uh, my slinky, right? Uh, oh my God, I lost my slinky. Okay, well, I have my purple print. So the big deal is with uh, ballet, or just as human beings, when your weight's in the center, right? If this is your plumb line and represents your spine, your weight's in the center, right? Oh, there's the slinky. <laughs> Always have your props ready, right? Okay. So this represents my spine, right? When I'm standing, say, just as a regular person, my weight's in the center, right? When you go to jump or run or something like that, you notice how my weight transfers from side to side, right? So my spine has to move over my legs. So in ballet, this becomes more of a challenge because external rotation, turnout makes it hard. Yeah? Okay, so I'm in my first position. To do a ton lié, a bound step, right? I'm going to taunt you. Notice my weight goes over to this side. So my spine shifted. Now I'm going to shift through the center, and I'm going to shift my weight completely to the other side. Why do I have to be able to do that? Because eventually we ask you to lift this leg and do all kinds of beautiful stuff, and you can't do it, you cannot do it if your weight is not transferred over, right? So once again, that was weight is in the center, weight is on to the left side. How do I know if my weight's transferred? This leg should feel very light. You should be able to pick it up really easy. If you have to go to pick it up, it means you haven't transferred enough, right? So you go to the side. Now my weight's on this left side. My weight went through the center. Now my weight's going to go over to the right side and close first. Now I'm going to go back to where I came. Now we go side, come through center, and shift the weight. And if you shift it like this, it means you're not quite doing a shift, right? When we say that leg should feel light, okay? So that's the basis for a tolie. That's how you're going to transfer your weight in ballet. So the step is going to go like this. It goes side through the second, through the side, and first. Transfer weight again. To the second, make sure to shift out to the first. Now we're going to do some arm positions here. Take, leaving the bar, you're gonna to go to the first position there. First position is somewhere between your sternum and your belly button, depending on who you are and your height. Just for this training method, we're going between the sternum and the belly button, like you're hugging a big beach ball. Now you're going to open the arms out to second. That's just the open version of that. Yeah, second. And then we're going to take the bar again. We go to the left now. We go side, shift the weight, shift it out and close to first. Go back to where you came. Side and shift the weight and shift it out, close to first. Port de bras again, up to first position. Open out to second, gently take the bar. Now we're going to go to the second part of the exercise. We add a plie. We go side to the plie, and then out to the first. Notice I transferred the weight and didn't collapse. Side to the plie, and then side to the first. Once again, port de bras to the first, to the second, take the bar. To the left, side to the plie, without dropping. Side to the plie, to the first and second, take the bar, okay? All of that is done with that shift of weight, right? And if you can always test yourself. You can always lift a leg, and if it's easy to lift, then you transferred your weight successfully keeping your legs turned out and your nice alignment, okay? We'll go with that one, we'll go, it goes to the right, uh, left, and then we do first position, then the other side, and then I'm just uh, double checking my band here, which one I'm gonna use. Okay, gently taking your bar, 
side, side, shift the weight, out, first, to the side, shift the weight, quarter bra goes, first position, second position, gently take the ball, now do the whole thing to the left, side, shifting, side, first, side, shifting, side, first, arms first position, on second position, gently take the ball. Now we add the plie dancers. Side, plie, stretch it, shift your weight, shift your center, now shift it over. Quarter bras goes, first position, arm second position, taking the ball, go to the left now, add, side, shift, side, side. Shifting, side, arms, first position, arms, second position, gently take the ball, and now just bring the arms down, look up and out. Okay, good. Hopefully you were successful with your shifts of weight. Now we're going to do a movement called pique. We, we touched on it a little bit earlier, um, but the idea for your pique is, um, let me go and get my cookie sheet again. <laughs> it's all about the props, right? I know Kirk is probably laughing. Actually, Scott is too, I'm sure. Okay, you go brushing. Now that creepy foot points. It disengages to about 45 degrees, right? You said that was between the knee and the ankle, 45 degrees. And then we're going to touch with a pointed foot and stretch knees. I cannot emphasize how important this is, right? You have to teach yourself because it goes against our human nature, but you want to go out, dégagé, reach and it's this pointed foot and a stretch knee. Our tendency is to do this as humans, right? You want to touch it with stretch knee. You have to train that into the body. So out, reach, touch. Think of touching the big toe, not the pinky toes, right? Big toe and come back, okay? So that is going to be um, part of it. We're going to go, that's, there's the déjà off, right? So there's the pique. You touch with straight knee. Now we're going to do a continuous pique. Right, so you know, we went disengaged, we came down. That was our PK. You're gonna go brush. It goes one to the two. Notice I kept my legs stretched. My foot is pointed, and I didn't do this with my leg. My body is stable, my spine is stable, my pelvis is stable. I'm gonna do seven of those, and I'm gonna close to the first. Now I'm gonna go to the all of succumb. That's to the side. So I'm gonna go one for the two, for the three, for the four, for the five, for the six, for the seven, and then close eight. We go to the left of that. So it goes to the front, devant. That's somewhere where your nose is, yeah? You go devant. You go to the front for two, for three. Notice my toe isn't getting weaker. It's getting stronger as I go. My knee is stretched. It's not bending, right? And I'm not doing this with my body. Six, seven, and then close eight. I'll also comb now with that. A five, a two, for three, for four, for five, for six. You go seven, and then close on eight. It bounces a little bit like a ball. So it's actually like a, there's a rebound. It goes down up, down up. Really important to keep the knee stretch foot pointed. Mm -hmm. Okay. PK to the right and to the left. Yeah. Hi. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure why my music is not working. Battery 100%. Connected to S A M F U N T S M C nine five zero U. Okay. Ah, there we go. P K goes one. Stretch, knee stretch. 
that, the opposite of the PK movement would be fondue. Fondue means to melt. Like it's talking about, like if you melt chocolate and you get to dip the fruit in the chocolate, or if you like cheese, you get to dip the bread in the cheese. Okay, so the idea is, is that you, you've done this sharp movement, the stretch knee, and now you're going to learn to keep ballet posture, but soften. So fondue can be anything where you're going to stretch and then you bend, or it can be a bend and an extend. We're just going to do a simple fondue. Positions. You do have to learn some positions for this. So I'm going to show a little bit more of my leg. Um, for this, the position is called coup de pied, but the action is called coupe. Coup de pied means uh, neck of the foot, and uh, coupe means cut, right? So we're kind of doing both. We're doing an action of a cutting, but the position is coup de pied. Easiest thing to feel your coup de pied is you're going to point your foot, you're going to cross your leg, point your foot to the front. Open up your thigh bone as you cut it sideways. As you bend your knee, drag your big toe joint in, leave your heel forward, touch your pinky toe to the front of the ankle, not your heel, your pinky toe. Notice my knee is aside as much as my anatomy is going to allow it. That's a coup de pied position, okay? So it's not the heel, it's not wrapped, the wrapped one is something different, right? So my thigh bone is cutting sideways and my pinky toe is by my ankle, but my foot isn't like this. My pinky, my heel is forward. This is forward, knee is to the side. That's coup de pied de bon. So I'm going to do a coup de pied de bon. Now to get that position to the back, I'm gonna tell you to the back, I'm gonna open up the thigh bone and bring my heel in, bring my heel in until my thigh bone goes sideways and my heel is at the back of my ankle. It's as low as I can go without touching the floor. And once again, I didn't sickle the foot. How do I not sickle the foot? Go from a really good tondu. If your tondu is good and rotated out, once again, we said plies and tondus for the basics, right? Open up your thigh bone, bring the heel in, open it up sideways. That's how you get a coup de pied derriere. Now I'm adding to that. I'm going to do a fondue action and a coup de pied position. So the fondue is the thigh bones cutting sideways while you're maintaining good posture. So I'm going to bend coup de pied. So the bend is happening with this leg. And then I'm going to switch. Then I'm going to bend this leg for a fondue and switch. Then I'm going to bend again, tondue to the side, cut it behind. Now we go to the other side. Fondue is on the back leg, coup de pied front, switch. Fondue on the front leg, coup de pied back, switch. Fondue. Touch to pique, and then lift your seat, lift your body to slice, okay? So that whole thing looks like this. At first, if you're new to this, the exercise can be confusing, but it's actually, once you get it, it's a great exercise, right? So it goes bending and stretch, bending and stretch, bending, touch to pique, slice. Other side goes to the bend, stretch to the bend, stretch to the bend, touch to pique and a slice. That's the whole exercise, okay, fondue. So bending the body, but keeping a very nice placement. Opposite of pique, yeah? Coup de pied front and bend. Cut the thigh bones. Bending. just to get our placement going, right? So now we're going to start to round that thigh bone, try to ask the hips to do a little bit bigger movement, right? So the thing about Ronde Jean's, if you think of, I, don't, I always say a wedding cake, like a really big, expensive, not a cheap one, big, expensive wedding cake. If you think of a circle going along the cake, so I'm going to use my right leg first. I'm going to brush to the front, 
really good to do, right? I'm gonna lead with a heel, and then the big toe joint stays on. Now I'm gonna maintain my stability on the standing side, the side I'm standing on, and I'm gonna rotate that leg and keep my big toe joint on the floor like I'm tracing the outside of that very expensive big wedding cake. Well, Charleston's known for like wedding destinations, right? Yeah, so you guys should be good with that, right? Now you're gonna reach that toe all the way to the back and then lift the body as you come up to first. That's called rond de jambe parterre en dehors. It means round of the thigh bone on the floor and we're going outward en dehors. Well, I don't wanna go into that, but we're just trusting, we're going outward. You go and out to the second and then back and close to first. We're gonna do that three times. We're gonna do a demi plie and then rise. Now we're gonna do it to the left, to the front, to the side, to the back, stopping first. Without letting the hips sway, to the front, keeping the hips up. Remember the pelvis bowl, right? Three of those, we go demi plie, stretch and rise. Now we're gonna go on to dog. For your on to dog, on to dog just means you're going inward to a leg that you're standing on, right? So my toes are gonna go back. I'm gonna to reach to the side. Without shifting my hips, I'm gonna to go to the front and then I'm gonna to come to first. Once again, on to dog, right? Inward, back. Rotate the leg to the side. Rotate it to the front and first position, right? Okay, we'll do that three times, demi plie rise, then on to dog on the other side, demi plie rise. Very last thing, when you've done your last demi plie rise, you're going to balance there. Now, how do I do that? I've got to be stable through my pelvis, stable through my seat. You don't want the heels low. I always say, everybody, take off your flip flops, put on your high, high heels, right? So you want to walk around in like some Christian Louboutins, right? You're going to go very high up in the body. You're going to take one arm to your first position, and you're going to take the other arm. You're going to try to stabilize your balance. You're going to take the bar and gently you're going to soften ankles, calves, knees, until the heels come down. Okay, Radha Shalom on your on your right and left, on the door right and left, and then a little balance at the end. Stabilize the pose, yeah? And to the front, rotate soft, rotate back, to the front again. Now you're never dropping, the body's always lifted. The front of the hip bones feel very high. First position, demi plie, soft knees. Now push the heels high, lift your seat. Go to the left and front. Open side. This is on day one. Back. Hard hair. No. Notice the other side of the pelvis doesn't sway. Creepy foot once again is the metatarsals are going to strike the floor and then go into an extension. So rather than just kind of going out with the foot this way, you can strike. It's I wouldn't say it's exactly like a tap shuffle or a fillet, but it's the idea is you strike almost like a fillet. So you strike the ball of the foot, but you're going to extend at the end of it. So I know there's a lot of tappers there in Charleston. Um, so uh, so you go strike and reach through. So for ballet. That looks like this. 
I'm going to flex my foot. So it's, it's almost like the Kudipi position, but it's flexed. There are some techniques where they keep the foot pointed. I'm just not going to, I'm gonna go through a flex. Right? So you go here, flex. My foot is by the ankle. I'm gonna strike with the ball of the foot and then I'm gonna extend it at the very end. Then I'm bringing the heel and the knee back. Then I strike the foot, ball of the foot, and then reach there at the end. I'm gonna to go to the same to the side. Strike and then reach, cross front, and then strike and then reach, cross back. I'm gonna to go to the derriere position. This one, you just have to be careful with because sometimes people will give me this. You're gonna lift your body. Remember, hips, hips are over the legs and the ribs are over the hips, right? So to the back, it looks like strike with the ball of the foot and reach. It only goes to 45 degrees. It doesn't go up higher, right? That's something else. So it goes down, it goes to that same 45 degree range. It goes strike and then reach, bring it in, and then strike and then reach, bring it in. We're gonna transition after that. We go demi plie flex and then demi plie flex. Now I'm gonna do the whole thing on the left. It goes strike and reach, bring it in. To the strike and reach, bring it in. To side, go to strike and reach, cross front. To the strike and reach, cross back. To the back, it goes strike and reach, open the thigh bone. Strike down through the floor and reach, demi plie. Flex the foot and then demi plie at the very end. Okay? So practicing striking down, keeping the state stability on that side. Right, try not to give me this when you strike the foot, keep your body stable. Flex your foot and strike down, reach me over. Strike down, reach to the side you go. for music terminology. So it's, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you have to be so flexible to do a dashio. Yes, you have to be flexible, but you have to be strong, right? It's only as good as like your leg going up here is only as good as the strength of the leg that you're standing on. So you don't want to build a house on sand. You want to build it on a good foundation, right? So our adagio is we're going to go to the front with the leg, pass through the tanju. Remember we said all good valley is plies and tanju. So we went to the front, now you're going to lift the leg up very high, as high as you can without collapsing or letting the pelvis go askew. The pelvis is still level. And then you're gonna lower with control and then plie to the side, go side, all calm, lifting that leg and then touch with control. Now, when you lift the leg to the also calm, that's the challenging one. Everybody sort of wants to do this. You gotta take, you gotta lift your seat, lift your body and let the leg go here so that we can rotate it. Right, tendu to the plie. We're gonna to go to the back. You go tendu, lift your leg to a position in the back called arabesque. Right, now arabesque just means, um, if it's talking about Moorish ornamentation, the arabesque, the swirls. So you wanna think of the leg going swirl back and then pique to the plie. Now we're gonna do a combre. Combre is, it just means to arch. So if you've got something, um, I've got a good height here. I want you to find the base of your shoulder blades. And uh, I'm just going up and I'm going over my ballet bar. So I know where to feel the bend. Ballet combres are not for your neck and they're not for your hips. They're for underneath the shoulder blades. So the idea is the slinky goes up and then it goes over. So I didn't push the hips, I didn't twist and I didn't collapse my neck. It's so important you do not collapse the neck. Okay, so the exercise, now I'm gonna show you to the other side. We go tendu to the front, lift that leg to dégagé, touch to pique plié. Side, try not to let the hips go back, lift the hips high. Touch to pique 
plie to the back. Lift that leg, touch to pique plie. Now I'm going to look to whatever leg's in front. I'm going to go back. I'm going to bend under my shoulder blades without collapsing in my neck or pushing my hips forward. Okay, to the front, to the side, to the back. Combre, to the back, to on the other side, repeat. Yeah? And arms. To the front, close front. Lift the leg, lower with control. Now keep the hips under your ribs, rotate the leg. To the back, goes back, reach. Now we do the combre. Look to the side. Other side, goes front, down. Plie to the side, go side. To the back, goes back. There's your arabesque. Look to the right and pump. And then just release. Okay. Bottom up, grand bottom up. Grand bottom up literally means big um, kick or big uh, a beaten, sorry, beaten. Right? So, uh, grand bottom up is. Uh, it's, you know, when you see somebody getting their legs up, but the idea is, is that when you do the kick, you don't get to sort of do a, like a karate chop thing. You don't get to collapse in your body. It's with that same pelvic control. So you pass through that really good tondu that you did, and it's a robot ma, you touch to pique. We know what a pique is from earlier, right? So I'm gonna go on qual with this. I'm gonna go brush to the front, robot ma, touch to pique. Side, go side, not dropping. Coming under, up to the PK. To the back and the Batma and PK on koala, we go side and the grand Batma, PK. Other side goes up front and the Batma, PK. Side goes side, grand Batma to the PK. To the back, grand Batma to the PK. To the side, Batma up. Okay, on koala right side, on koala left side. in a jump. Yes, you have to be strong in your core. You have to have your seat engaged, your abdominals. You have to have a good strong push of the legs, but jumping is very sophisticated through the feet for ballet. Um, and ballet dancers get injured far less than other athletes because they do know how to do what's called a roll through. I'm going to teach you a really good roll through. So the foot's going to go to this demi point position, a half toe position with the heel high, not low. And then I'm going to push against the floor with my metatarsals, like almost like I'm flicking them. So here, the movement goes, kink, and it pushes up, right? And then it passes through the demi point and lowers down. So once again, it goes, boom, and kink, with the toes. So that little flick with the toes. on With the slippers, it looks like demi point, and you see the little flick? Okay, don't go under and don't go out, right? Just go straight. So when I go, my metatarsals are underneath my heel. They're not out, they're not this way. That's the flick, that's the secret to going up and down in jumps for ballet. Helps you take off, make sure it's quiet on the landing. So it's gonna go demi point, flick the metatarsals, demi point, come down, okay. So it looks like this. On the right, it goes to the demi point and flick those metatarsals, really push. I like to call them toe push-ups first. Then you go to the other side, demi point and flick the metatarsals and demi point lower down. 
rise, you come down, and rise and coming down, you go bend spring. That's a releve. Okay, so the rise is an eleve, that just means the lift, and releve is with a plie up. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the other side. Practice the toe push-ups. Demi point and push the metatarsals and demi point coming down. And demi point and push the metatarsals, demi point come down. You go rise and come down, rise and come down, you go bend spring. Okay, that's the part, that's the first part of your jumping. Okay, so I call it the demi point exercise, you know. Right, go down, spring it, like a push-up, spring it, elevate bronze, bronze, down. Now go bend rocks, spring, left, down, flip the toes, down, flip the toes, rocks, high heels. Now we're going to jump it. It's the same type of movement when you jump. So we're going to start with the plie. We go to the bend and stretch and arise and lower down. To the bending stretch and arise and lower down. Plie push rolling through. Plie push rolling through. That was a saute in first. So once again, bend without collapsing. Yeah. To five bone sideways. Yeah. To the bend and stretch and the rise and lower down. A bending, stretching, and rise and lower down. So take, then push rolling through to the bend. Did you see the spring? Spring through the metatarsals, roll through, soften at the plie. To the second, same thing, bend, stretch to the rise. To the bend, stretch to the rise. Plie, push. See that toe metatarsal? Push, spring the metatarsals. Back to first. So I'm going to do first side, second side, now first and second. Okay, practice that springing and always catch the plie on the way down and cushion your body. Goes to the bend, stretch, rise. To the bend, stretch, rise. isometric stretching. Isometric stretching is when you um, hold the stretch a little bit longer as opposed to ballistic, which is where there's a lot of movement involved. So isometric stretching should only be done after you're already warmed up. So before class, ballistic stretching would be, say, like leg swings, um, burpees, if you know what those are, push-ups, plank poses, um, uh, Spider-Mans, that's where you crawl across the floor to warm up the hips. That's before you start dancing. Once you're warmed up with your dancing, then you can start to move into isometric stretching. It's just very important. Your heart rate is up to help the bursa and the muscles be warmed up and ready to go. So I'm just going to lead you through a little bit of stretching. Find a good place on the floor. Okay, and first you flex your feet and then just lean with a straight. So don't round yet. Straight. Now reach forward. You can point your feet. Right knee in, flex left foot, and reach for that left foot. If you can't reach the foot, reach the ankle. Switch sides. Soles of the feet together. 
culture for the indigenous. The child's class. of the arm. Right? Um, if you are newer, newish to this, just the 10 second explanation is you're going to stretch your arms out to the side, completely to the side. Uh, the idea is if you have a side seam on your garment or if you use your ribs as a guideline, you're going to take the arms and put them in front of your ribs. So they don't go to the side and they don't go behind. They go in front of the ribs. Right? So here they are in front of the ribs and they start to go below the shoulders. Right? So they're not up here, they're not back here. They're in front of your ribs or the side seam on your garment, flexing your heels of your hands very strongly, and they're below the shoulders. Looks like that. Now I'm going to start to take the point of my elbow, the back of my elbow, and I'm going to push it to the back of the room. Right? So whatever that means for you, if that's there, pushing it right now, right? I'm going to keep it below the shoulders in front of my ribs, push the elbow to the back of the room. Now I'm going to take the palm of the hand, and I'm going to bring that forward. So that whole thing looks like this from the front. It goes, pushing the hands, bring them in front of the ribs, below the shoulders. Now take the point of the elbow and push it backwards. Now take the palm of the hand and bring it forward, and that's going to be a ballet second position. Keeping the elbow rotated, I'm going to bring the arms to this bottom position. We're going to call that fifth on bas, so that it's not collapsed and lifted this way, right? So my arms are in fifth on bas. It's a very active position with my back. I'm going to take the arms up to first position. If you're a seasoned person, you can add weights that will help you with your um, uh, resistance training, right? So you go up to first position. We said first was in between the sternum and the belly button, right? So keep it there, right? In between the sternum and the belly button. Now we're going to glide the arms as if you're pushing the like, curtains open, but you're going to push them with the backs of your arms. Push the curtains open, and notice it's in front of the ribs still, right? So it's not collapsed and it's not back here. It balances in the front. Now I'm going to begin to rotate my arms in their sockets, and I'm going to just start to float them down, softening elbow, wrist, and hand. That's what we call port de bras number one, right? So we're going to go up to first position between the belly button and the sternum. Elbows are always higher than the wrist, not this way, this way. Glide the arms out to second, extend the arms out, and then soften elbow, wrist, and hands, right? Okay, port de bras number one. Standing in your nice first position, and arms first position, arms second position, extend the arms, now soften the elbow, wrists, and hands to bring them down, tall body dancers, and first position, take your arms out to your second, and stretch, two more times with that. Think of hugging a big beach ball. Elbows higher than wrists. Push those arms out to second. Extend and soften elbow, wrist, and hand. Don't touch the body here at the bottom. Not that. First position. Arms second position. Extend and soften elbow, wrist, and hand. Look up and out. Okay, quarter round number one. Okay, we're going on to port de bras number two. Port de bras number two is you're going to do that same fifth on bas position. Remember, arms are collapsed. It's in front of the ribs, right? You're going to go up to first position between the belly button and the sternum. Now, without lifting the shoulders, I'm going to just start to glide my shoulders, blades down my back. I'm going to take my arms up to the high position. I'll back up so maybe you can see a little bit better, right? The idea is, is when you look, your hands are in front of of your body, not here and not here, because your balance is in front of your body. So you're taking the arms up to the high position. It's almost like a picture frame for your face. If you look up, you should see the palms of the hands, and from the side, the elbows are this way, they're rotated this way, and they are in front of your body, 
Now, it's as if you're tracing up and over a rainbow. You're going to go up, take the arms over. They go well below the shoulders. Well below the shoulders, yeah? Rotate the arms, and then they come hip on bob. Okay, so that was port de bras number two. We go up to first position, elbows higher than wrists. Glide the shoulder blades down your back as the arms go up high. Don't take them too far back. Cut up and over that rainbow. Take the arms through the fifth on bas in front of the ribs, not to the side or back. Rotate the arms and lower down and down and down. If you can think you're passing through water for the resistance at the same time, that's great, right? So four to round number two, yeah? And four to round first position. Take that arm up high. Up and over. Well below the shoulders. Rotate. Back. First position. Take that up to hip on up. Shoulders far from ears. Open it up. And stretch. And first position. Elbows to the side. Now go in front of the ribs. And first position. Fit on up. Now go in front of the ribs, well below the shoulders. Rotate and. Okay, that's quarter round number two. Okay. okay, we're gonna do a tolie, which we did earlier. So tolie, raise step, right? Or, or sorry, bound step. Tolie is the bound step, so it means it stays on the ground. What was that? The tolie was just our change of weight, right? So we said the weight's on one side, and you shift through the center, and then it shifts over to the other side. And that's all well and good, but we have to stay turned out in ballet. So the hips have to rotate out to the side, and we have to do the change of weight. So I'm just going to take my slinky and put it back here so you can kind of see. I'm going to go to new side. The weight is shifted, right? I can lift the leg easy. I'm going to shift through the center, and now I'm going to shift over to the other side and close. Right? So once again, my weight's in the center. I have to shift to do the tendu, shift to the center, shift to the other side first. Right? That's a tonlié. Now, how do I know if I was successful? We talked about if you do the tonlié and your foot's this way, you haven't shifted enough. Shift a little more. See how my foot's pointed? So I'm shifting through the center, and now I have to do a big shift over. If I do it like this, I'm not quite ready, right? I'm here, so that the leg eventually can go higher. So the whole combination looks like this. I'm going to face this way, so our hands are going to go on the hips, right? That's what I call that ballet default. So our ballet default is here. So we're going to go five, six, take the hips on seven, eight. You go side, change the weight, and change it. Shift. Shift the weight, bound step, out first. Now we do that twice. We go like we did at the bar. First position there, open second position there, bring the arms down, take the hips once again. Go to the left with that. Out, change the weight, and out. First, you go and out and change the weight into the out. Arms go first position there. Arms go second position there. Coming down, take the hips. Guess what? Second time, just like at the bar. Side and change and out. First, to the, oh, sorry, add the plie. Second time, add the plie. So lies and deceptions, right? Add the plie. Side to the plie and out to the side, add a plie and out. Arms go first position this time, they go fifth on O next time, and you go out and changing there. Side to the plie and the stretch, side to the plie and the stretch, first to the fifth, open up second, okay? First time, no plie, port de bras one. Second time, yes, plie, port de bras two. Okay, I will lead you through.
only a change in the way. Right. One nice last thing here at the center, yeah. Um, jumping back to that springing of the metatarsals, creepy foot, right? Bend, spring, bend, spring the metatarsals, okay? Now, just a little word of advice. If you are on a hard floor, a hard surface or something like that, I recommend putting on sneakers, okay? Um, I'm lucky I have this little bit of Marley uh, here, so, and the floor's got a little bit of a spring to it, but if you don't, sneakers are the best way. And if, if you've been kind of stuck inside and everything, you really need to get your cardio going, okay? So sneaker, and then once again, we said if you're on a slick floor and you're in ballet slippers, a wet paper towel, you just get a little water, put it on the paper towel, and you're gonna stick, okay? So what we did earlier, we did the first position. We're gonna go to the default, okay? So here we are, we're in our first position, and we go, arms go here, to the bend, just like you did before, rising up and lower down to the bendy stretch and arise and lower down. Plie sauté, roll through. Plie bend, push the metatarsals, roll through. Time to the right leg to second. Same thing in second. Bend and stretch to the rise. To the bendy stretch to the rise. Plie sauté, jump. Plie sauté, go back to first. First, second on the right, first, second on the left. One little thing though, one little thing. Tennis ball, like any kind of ball, when you jump, it's an energy return thing. So you could jump, you could put the energy in this like that, right? Not so great. The energy I want you to put into the bend and push is this, okay? The second one, you see bend, push, so I get that nice high jump, and that's what ballet jumping is. Push with the legs, yeah? strong downbeat followed by two softer beats, okay? So we're gonna do a waltz way just to get it into your body. Now, depending on how much room you have, I understand people are kind of have lack of space, but uh, if you can, it's such a lovely thing. Now keep your body externally rotated, so keep your legs turned out. You're gonna go shift the weight right, shift left, step together there. That's called a chasse. That's all a chasse is, is a step together, right? Shift left, shift right, chasse, step together, there and shift right, shift left, chasse, step together, and uh, left and right, chasse, step. Okay, let's do just that part. That's just the first part. Shift. Going to make a circle as you go around and shift to the leg to the leg circle as you do the step together chasse and stretch okay so it looks like this to the leg to the leg circle up stretch and uh, to the leg to the leg circle up 
stretch, okay? If that's too much, you just go back to the default, okay? Small sways with the arm. So I'm saying thank you to you, and hopefully you're saying thank you if you're with anybody dancing. And thank you to the Cultural Arts Center of Charleston. Yeah. And Scott, thank you to my husband and stepson. Thank you, Cayman. Thank you, uh, on stage dancewear. And please don't forget to click if you like something, share it with others, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dance with Mary NYC. And thank you so much for letting me be part of your kitchen or maybe your living room. Okay. And if you want to know more, Dance with Mary NYC is also on Facebook. Thank you so much, everybody. My mentor, David Howard, would have said, keep calm and carry on. Yeah.